This is Witchbase News for Friday the 27th of September 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week the community steps up at the Battle of Shinrata, has the Thargoids great lidless eye turned toward Colonia, Powerplay 2.0 is detailed in this months livestream and FDev puts a date on the new feature reveal for Elite Dangerous. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ding the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. There's no subtle way to adequately express what starts our broadcast this week so I'm just gonna say it. The previously unthinkable attack by the Thargoids on the home of the Pilots Federation Shinrata Desra was stopped in its tracks this week by an extraordinary community effort that has seldom been seen in this game. So determined was the level of resistance that the player base mustered that the ED tracking website Inara is reporting that 8918 signed up for the fight against the Thargoids claiming a combined total of 5,664,590,300,150 credits in squashed putrid pumpkin combat bonds. The attack was also using the now firmly established Thargoid war system so although the community goal could potentially run for a week the ferocious attack was stopped dead in its tracks in just a matter of days with Frontier announcing on Tuesday that the attack had been repelled. There were significant weapon rewards for even just a minimal contribution to the community goal and if you haven't already you can pick those up from the Cornwallis megaship now. The community goal required access to Shinrata Desra, a system normally permit locked to all but those holding an elite rank in any discipline. That access isn't being revoked until next Thursdays server tick so if you wouldn't normally have access to Shindes then be aware that you have a few precious days left as at the time of recording to dock at Jameson's Memorial Starport where you will find every ship and module in the game available for a nice discount. Having tried and failed a new bold move in the bubble what the Thargoids try next is of course anyone's guess. A tweet from Frontier regarding the community goal rewards from our previous story set some small fires in the community on Thursday when it was accompanied by what appeared to be an image of a Thargoid attack near one of the known notable stellar phenomena POIs in the Colonia system near Jacques Station. Suffice to say Colonia is absolutely nowhere near any significant Thargoid activity and it never has been to the tune of 22,000 light years in fact. A good few commanders have elected to vacate the bubble and have chosen to stay in the Colonia region precisely due to its historical Thargoid free nature. Many commanders, us included, were left wondering if this image from Frontier is indeed a hint of things to come and that we should expect the unexpected, even as far outside the bubble as the relative safety of Jacques Station. We have been able to largely replicate the screenshot here albeit without Thargoid intervention and you can see that image on screen now. It's always possible of course that the image was created purely for marketing and community engagement purposes using some dev magic and no thought was given to the system that the shot was taken in. Colonia is very photogenic and system wise it's an easy and obvious win if you're looking for a nice backdrop for your image. In lieu of any further evidence at this point I'm personally inclined to believe the latter option but two weeks ago I thought there wasn't a goldfish in a furnace chance that the violent vegetables would attack Shinrata so what the chuff do I know. One final point worth remembering Frontier did say when the Thargoid war kicked off that nowhere not even Colonia technically speaking was safe from the Thargoid advance in the unlikely event that we chose to ignore the war completely. 
and I've personally always maintained that, as well as acting as a nice line of motorway service stations, the Colonia Bridge that spans the void between the bubble and Colonia also acts as a superbly signposted route map to that most distant of human outposts. The monthly livestream Frontier Unlocked arrived on Wednesday this week and, as is the case these days, it was very information dense. As well as detailed information on the new Explorer class Mandalay which we covered in our video earlier this week ...that's linked on screen now in case you missed it ...Frontier also delivered answers to some of the questions from the community on PowerPlay 2.0 that they prompted last month. The answers given do form the deepest dive yet that we've had into the revamped galactic tug of war system and are available for your perusal and digestion in two flavours. Firstly a video of the questions and answers was shown on the stream featuring designer on Elite Dangerous Curtis Griffith. There is also a written FAQ published after the livestream that not only covers off the answers shown during the livestream but also adds a couple more into the mix as well. If you're even slightly interested in PowerPlay 2.0 and what it's likely to mean for the galaxy at large then I'd highly recommend taking a stroll through the written FAQ at the very least. Again that's linked below. I won't go through every single answer in this video but there are a couple of important points that are worth underlining I think. Also from what we now understand from the presentation we have a much more solid idea of how power play is going to affect day to day play in the game and if you're pledged to a power and you're operating in the bubble it does seem that it is going to affect day to day play. The first important thing of note and this is something that we'd long suspected the old and frankly rather curious power play mechanics such as loading up 10 leaflets into a type 9 and then paying a bunch of credits for the privilege of loading up 10 more leaflets then rinsing and repeating is thankfully gone. Whilst it hasn't been specifically stated it seems that when pledged to a power actions that you take in an inhabited system will count toward your powers influence in some regard. Frontier haven't said specifically what actions all they have said thus far is quote ...a large chunk of activities in the game will now contribute to power play unquote and then followed up with the specific examples of trading for profit or recovering salvage from wrecks etc. The other related point to all this is that Odyssey gameplay is being brought under the power play hood as well. The specific examples given were uploading spyware to a settlement and delivering biological samples to a power contact. Whilst we're talking effects on your day to day gameplay ...whilst the crime and punishment system hasn't been given a direct overhaul and is largely staying the same there will now be power play security agents present in the game in controlled systems and if you're not aligned with their power they will attack you whereas vanilla security services will leave you alone unless you've got an actual crime registered against you. One of the main reasons for the vast majority of players in Elite Dangerous up until this point to participate in power play has been the acquisition of some of the games more exotic modules and weapons with each power having their own specific piece of tech they could supply at the appropriate level of devotion. This system positively encouraged players to get what they wanted from a given power and then immediately defect to another power to get the next big shiny ...kind of negating the point of power play in the first place and I think I did well to get through that paragraph without accidentally calling it powerpoint. With power play 2.0 all powers will have access to all power play modules but the order they supply them to those pledged as they rank up through the power is prioritised differently for each power. Frontier hasn't yet been any more specific on how that plays out in real terms overall though ranking up through a power will provide perks in your chosen powers systems and care packages that reward credits and engineering materials as well as the power play modules. Frontier confirmed in the video that a new power will be added when power play 2.0 drops in the form of counsellor Nakato Kane the representative for the Tianisla system who will provide some much needed pull for the alliance. 
In the written fact version the question will new powers be added is answered merely with a simple yes. As we've stated on this channel multiple times before we wouldn't be surprised to see at least one other new power also added to the pantheon of figureheads. And it was underlined in the answers again by Frontier that powerplay will now cause cosmetic changes in starports and other locations to reflect the encroachment and rise of a power in a system. It's yet to be spelled out exactly how the stronghold carrier fleets that were revealed on a livestream a few months back will affect gameplay and system activity directly both for the owning power and those that would choose to intervene in their presence and Frontier haven't elaborated on that further at this point. That will, I think, be one of the features that I'm personally most keen to explore when the update arrives. The whole power play update now entitled Elite Dangerous Ascendancy will be arriving on the 22nd of October bringing with it a whole new level of political back and forth interaction and the new Zorgon Peterson Mandalay. Elite Dangerous started this year in a difficult place. At the start of January 2024 the developing house at Frontier was in the midst of a serious financial storm. The entire games industry through 2024 has, to put it mildly, tightened its belt somewhat and the waves of redundancies seen in the industry cut through the Cambridge developers to the tune of 20% of their staff as well. FDev's woes were also compounded by the spectacularly unsuccessful release of the rather ironically named Warhammer title Realms of Ruin. With its parent company on wobbly woodworm riddled stilts it could be argued that the oftentimes challenging space simulator was staring at something of an abyss coming up to meet it. Seemingly undeterred however Frontier chose to hit the ground running and, in a genius move that was undoubtedly made to settle a nervous community, no sooner had the festive decorations been stuffed into the loft for another year they quickly announced not only a roadmap for the year ahead but a roadmap with meaningful additions to the game that also demonstrated a willingness in the company to monetize the game better, something many in the community had been asking them to do for a very long time. That 2024 roadmap stated that the Thargoid War would be coming to an end, an existing game feature that we now know to be power play would be getting a revamp, it would see at least 4 new ships added this year, we now know th what 3 of those ships are and finally that a whole new feature that is yet to be announced would also be coming to the game. This year has also seen a very well received and long overdue overhaul of the engineering systems for both ships and on foot gameplay. The roadmap was released as part of FDev's new Frontier Unlocked monthly livestream series. The show being a refresh of the company's entire collection of livestreams condensed into one multi-title monthly package. That livestream, regardless of whatever else FDev has going on, has consistently seen Elite Dangerous as the headline act at the end of the show every single month. And quite often the very very end of the stream is punctuated by an Elite Dangerous mic drop moment from Frontiers community principal Arthur Tolmy where he reveals just what we can expect from next months livestream and this time was no different. In the last dying seconds Arthur announced that the as yet unannounced new feature coming to Elite Dangerous would be revealed to the community on the next Frontier Unlocked livestream on the 30th of October. Precisely what that announcement is going to reveal who can say but with a new ship arriving, a reworked and revitalized power play system landing and the new feature announcement it's a certainty that October is going to be yet another action packed month for the game. Will you be pledging to a superpower when Ascendancy arrives on the 22nd of October? After the attack on Shinrata do you think Colonia is now in peril and just what do you think the new feature announcement will be? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.